Irish police are still looking for the machine pistol used in the botched attack on the Dublin Steakhouse on Christmas Eve. Suspected gangster Tristan Sherry, who's 26 years old, opened fire at a 47-year-old man while he was eating at Brown Steakhouse at around 8pm in Blanchardstown, West Dublin, on December the 24th. Sherry was promptly overpowered and shot in the head with his own gun and reportedly stabbed almost 30 times, killing him. But somehow, the Garda do not know where his submachine gun is. Both Tristan Sherry and the victim, who is in critical condition, are known to police for their alleged involvement in drug crime. Detectives say the steakhouse hit on the Sunday was likely unplanned and Sherry may have been pushed by his gangland associates to carry out the attack. The claim emerges is reported that Tristan Sherry also tried to kill a rival amid the Corder feud, a spree of more than 70 incidents of arson, shootings and beatings in Ireland in 2019. Investigators say he fired seven shots into a car in or Hudart village. Sherry was a chief suspect in the shooting in 2019 and then on Christmas Eve he went on and targeted another man but he was never regarded as the brightest and the shooting highlights it. The attacker suspected to be Tristan Sherry burst into the restaurant which was packed full of people including young families who all witnessed the attack. It is understood Sherry entered with another person and targeted a man in his 40s. The attack unfolded in a way that was bound to create chaos. There's one way in and one way out of that restaurant. To walk in covered with a firearm like he did in a packed restaurant just caused absolute mayhem. Here's he tried to find another exit out of the shooting, but couldn't. He was caught and then it was clear he suffered a horrendous death himself. After the attack, Sherry's accomplice is believed to have fled the scene in a white Audi. It is not known if police have yet been able to locate the second unidentified alleged assailant. The victim of the hit was later taken to Dublin's Connolly Hospital and remains in a critical condition. The motive for the shooting is understood to be the ongoing feud between drugs gangs in Cordoff, Blanchardstown and Finglas in North Dublin. Both sides have been exchanging attacks since 2019. The Garde fear an all-out war between the two factions following the death of Tristan Sherry. Tristan Sherry's family set up a fundraiser to help pay for his funeral, but have since taken the page down without specifying why. They aim to raise €7,000 to cover the funeral costs after he died in West Dublin. It brought in at least 27 donations, totaling hundreds of euros within days from the family, friends and well-wishers. The page was pulled on December the 27th. A spokesman for GoFundMe said, this fundraiser is within the terms, has been closed down by the organisers. We do not allow fundraising for legal defence of violent crime. Fundraisers for their families to pay for their funerals are allowable. Tristan Sherry's understood be aligned with the fingless based gang of one Mr Flashy, the Westies, contending with the Blanchardstown mob. The country had long endured the clashes between Hutch and the Kinnan gangs of Ireland, resulting in the deaths of 18 people. Various shootings, arson attacks and stabbings before mostly dying down around 2018. But within a year, the Cordor feud had erupted and reinvigorated regional violence in the streets of Ireland. The Westies were supposedly backed by the Kinnan aligned, fingless based mob of one Mr. Flashy a local warlord since 2015. Their own history dates back decades, the gang controlling the heroin trade in West Dublin in the late 1990s and early 2000s. They made international headlines in 2006 when the bodies of members killed in 2003 and 2004 were recovered. They were buried under concrete in a warehouse near Alicante in Spain. On the other side of the Blanchard town mob, a contesting power that antagonised the legacy gangs when they started throwing their weight around with a string of beatings in 2018. The court of feud began when a gang local to Dublin split into two family-based factions. The divisions came to clash over control of the region's drug trade. 
a market that suffered a great contraction in the preceding years amid the recession. But law enforcement sources say they're absolutely stunned when a 23-year-old Zach Parker was shot and killed, found dead outside a gym in Finglas in January 2019. People who knew him was where he was caught with drugs a while back and that he appeared to have plenty of money. But they never thought for a second he'd end up dead. Parker was described as a cardboard gangster, focused on working out his tan, but affable, pleasant, manly. Not the sort to get caught up in drug violence. Reports said of an unidentified man associated with a spiralling corridor feud was suspected of involvement in Zach Parker's murder. Parker aligned himself with one faction in the Corridor feud and had been the target of at least one murder attempt. Contemporary reports claimed, adding that there had been several exchanges of gunfire in Corridor since the start of 2019. The Garde believe both factions have access to a large number of weapons at short notice. Parker's death was still believed to be linked to a North Dublin's drugs dispute in 2022 but police released a prime suspect without charge after days of interrogation. In the early months of 2019, the feud spilled into a litany of horrifying acts of public violence. In February, footage showed the moment a gunfight broke out in broad daylight in the Cordoff area. Video showed alleged members of the opposing drug gangs dipping into cover before a young person dressed in black opened fire with a handgun. No one was injured, but there have been plenty of shootings of property. Essentially, there's been an internal row in a gang, and they are now split. Both factions are now at war, and are carrying out attacks on each other. But the violence now is out of control, and by April, police warned that a murder was inevitable. Tensions continued to simmer between two factions. On April 2nd, a school was placed into lockdown, after a gunman opened fire at the gates in a botched gangland hit. Police later found a loaded handgun stashed just yards from the shooting, allegedly belonged to Mr. Flasher. The connection drew the turf war into a much larger conflict as sources identified Flasher as the cousin of Daniel Kinnan's representative in West Dublin. Through association, the Court of Feud was now linked to a longer history of organised crime in Ireland. It was later revealed that Flashy Mob gave shelter to a man accused of using a machete to attack a gang member outside the police station in April 2019. Martin Cunningham was given a three-year sentence for the attack outside Fingler Scarda station, sparked by the alleged targeting of his innocent family members. He was with the so-called Gucci gang of Fingless, aligned with the Westies, against the rival mob of the Blanchard town, and resented that his home had been shot at and windows smashed with hammers when his younger autistic brother was at home. In revenge, Cunningham stored the guard at station while the son of Kenneth Fitzsimmons of the rival faction was being interrogated by the guard. Fitzsimmons later recounted how Cunningham arrived with a big machete, knocking him into the ground and striking him repeatedly with a blade. He suffered cuts to the neck, arms, legs and torso, his ribs exposed on both sides from deep wounds. The attacks continued through April, mostly tit for tat with gang members allegedly firing on residential properties in Finglas and Cordoff. Things took another step in May. In stunning scenes, a house was destroyed on a fire on May the 4th after thugs broke windows with hammers and poured petrol into the building before setting it alight. A car with four passengers had pulled up outside the property before mobsters got out and smashed their way in. Two men were forced to jump from the upstairs window to escape the blaze. Days later, two innocent women were visually beaten in an attack, believed to be girlfriends of the Westies gangsters. At the time, clashes were happening on almost daily basis, as both sides had easy access to a steady supply of weapons. Irish Defence Forces uncovered a Russian handgun and a silencer, and later a shotgun and ammunition in a massive search of the area in May. The conflict subsided for a time, but the Christmas Eve attack has left the guard a seriously concerned that innocent members of the public may be dragged back into the wider feud. It warned it would be a matter of time before a murder had happened, 
as it was revealed Tristan Sherry is believed to have been involved in an attack on a rival gang member four years ago. Investigators say Tristan Sherry fired seven shots into a car being driven by a gangster in Mulhodar village in an attempt on his life. The victim was able to flee uninjured before burning out his own car and refusing to work with investigators. The Garde responded to the escalation with Operation Runoff, a targeted campaign which even saw a TV show made on the dramatic drug raids and murder investigations facing officers in the region. But it has been no easy task for the police to stay on top of the organised crime. In Ireland's busiest policing district, in August 2021, a volatile gangster from Cordoff was taken into custody, suspected of driving a high power vehicle into a rival's while driving on the wrong side of the road. The 25 year old man suffered serious head injuries and he was taken into hospital after the white van he was driving hit a wall. Reports said the unnamed suspect had been one of the main figures in the 2019 feud and now was heavily involved in a violent dispute with the thingless based. Mr. Flashy Gang and his associates. The ambush in Dublin Steakhouse on Christmas Eve has police bracing for more targeted attacks as tensions flare between historic rivals. As the victim of the shooting remains in critical condition in hospital, armed guard patrols have stepped up in anticipation more violence could break out. For the hitman Tristan Sherry, on Christmas Eve, there was one way in and one way out at that restaurant and it appears he tried to find another exit out after the shooting but couldn't. He was caught and then it was clear he suffered a horrendous death himself.